So my name is Brian Shapiro, and I'm one of the cardiologists at the Mayo Clinic in Florida. So hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is a genetic disease, and it essentially, in a lot of patients, causes thickening of the heart muscle. Now, the thickening can be in all sorts of different distributions and regions and so forth. A lot of people are completely asymptomatic. It's found incidentally. Maybe they got an ECG or something like that. And then sometimes they have symptoms. Some of the symptoms may be things like shortness of breath, chest pain, um, even sudden cardiac arrest uh, can be one of the presentations. So essentially, the diagnosis can occur in about one out of 500 in the population, so it's very, very highly prevalent. But unfortunately, both in the US and abroad, it's very much underdiagnosed. And part of that is just because many patients don't have symptoms related to it. Perhaps they have a family history, mother, father, brother, and sister that may have had issues. And in those patients, they should be screened. So we recommend that everybody who's got a first degree relative of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy should be screened. And typically the screening is with a clinical evaluation, an echocardiogram, ECG, things of this nature. But unfortunately, the reason why it's so difficult to diagnose is because it really depends on where the muscle thickening is. If the muscle thickening is in just the wrong spot, it can cause an obstruction to blood flow out of the heart and that can subsequently cause all those symptoms, the breathing difficulties, the chest pains, the passing out, things of this nature. And you, you know, a lot of the symptoms can mimic many other diseases, you know, angina, arrhythmias, things like this. So the symptoms are very nonspecific. Now there are some physical examination findings that all cardiologists and physicians are trained to look at certain type of murmurs, carotid impulse and things, but even at that, the signs on examination can be very non-sensitive. Non you mirror a non-specific finding on history to a non-sensitive issue or finding on exam, and it can be very tricky to diagnose. The very important thing for all of us is to have a high index of suspicion. Again, this is a one out of 500 incidents, and so we must be thinking about that so first and most importantly, every clinician needs to use a very good history and physical examination. That's the foundation of cardiology. Then every patient should have an EKG and an X-ray. And the way I teach my medical students and trainees is you get little inklings from each one of those. Maybe they had some breathing difficulties. Now they've got a murmur. The ECG reveals hypertrophy. Things that gives you clues. And so most of the time, that's what we're doing. We're detectives. But that being said, once you sort of get to that point, now you got to get more advanced, whether it be with echocardiography. Now we're doing things like strain, and there's very characteristic strain patterns that we look at that help us with that diagnosis of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Because the other things you have to think about is this athletic heart, is this cardiac amyloid. Are there so many different types of mimickers? And so specific echocardiographic uh, images and techniques help to pinpoint point, and we may go one extra step. Uh, and that extra step might be a cardiac MRI. And what a cardiac MRI might tell us is number one, the distribution of the muscle thickening. Where is it? How thick is it? So forth and so on. But much more importantly is the MRI is almost like having a biopsy. You can look at the tissue integrity. Is there scar? There's a number of different patterns which make the diagnosis of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy highly, highly specific with, our, with MRI. So there's a whole handful of, older, of other things that can essentially mimic hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So you have to have a high index of suspicion. I believe many of us are trained to get those clues, but ultimately there are some tests that can be done at the Mayo Clinic which can help fine tune or really exclude those other diagnoses. Um, and it's not just the test. You know, we have the echo, we have the strain, we have a number of different parameters that we do in echo. We've got the cardiac MRI, the tissue integrity, heart cath, things of this nature, but it also is a team effort, you know? So we're always interacting with our cardiac surgeons, our imagers, our interventionalists, our geneticists. I would say it's really a team effort and you're integrating the test with the expertise. So essentially, once you've established the diagnosis of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, where do you go from there? So many of our patients are either asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic, and they may just do perfect and 
require very little follow-up and further testing and treatments. But you know, essentially what I do when I see one of these patients, I break it up into symptoms and then risk of sudden cardiac arrest. Those are two very different things. And so a lot of the tests and the consultations that we're doing look both at the symptoms and what are your risk of sudden cardiac death. So when it comes to treatment, so many of our patients require very little. Maybe it's just a certain medication like metoprolol or something along these lines, but there are patients that are very symptomatic that require more. Unfortunately, when it comes to the septomyectomy, there are some centers that have essentially low volume which might attempt this, and that's where some of the complications may occur, whether it be a ventricular septal defect, the need for pacemaker implantation, a number of other things, or perhaps they didn't cut enough and really left the patient with continued symptoms, which essentially um, uh, warrants the surgery worthless. So it's amazing with the right hands of the right surgeon how quickly, efficiently this can be done. And so it's a very gratifying procedure. And, and again, if done in the right hands, can be very effective.